Hey everyone and welcome back to NP Station. Today I will be sharing with you all an amazing coding platform which is a great place to start learning how to code in JavaScript. It is called Code Guppy. I will be giving you all a tutorial on how to code in JavaScript and I'll be explaining the basics of programming as well. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video so you can find out more about this amazing coding platform. Also, don't forget to subscribe to NP Station and give this video a big thumbs up. Now, let's get coding. Hey everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So you can see here that I have opened the Code Guppy website on my computer. This is the main page. So here, there um, I am in the tutorials section and there are so many coding tutorials that you can click on and dive into. There are a lot where you can create your own games, such as this Mars attack, you have Tarzan, invaders, and there's also some uh, simple lessons that you can look at, like this intro to coding lesson, pixels and coordinates, expressions and variables. So this first one here, uh, you can see actually with all of these uh, tutorials, they will also come with a small gist of what that lesson is about. So this intro to coding lesson is about, it says here, welcome to the wonderful world of coding. In this first lesson, you'll learn to write your first JavaScript instruction. So let's go ahead and if you are interested in that lesson, you just click on the start tutorial button and it will take you into the tutorial. So here on the left hand side of your screen, it will show you where the tutorial bar, all right? This is where the tutorial is written. This next area right here is where you're gonna write the code, all right? This is the code editor. And this right area is also where you see the results of your code. That is going to be the output area. So here, you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says your previous button, you also have next, and this tutorial has 12 pages. You can see that at the bottom. So if you click next, it will keep taking you to the next page of the tutorial. And it will also automatically put in a code in your code editor. So if you run this, you can see by clicking this run button, it will print you a circle in the center of your screen. So that's pretty cool. Now I want to go back, uh, uh, just actually show you guys real quick, the sidebar right here. So let's go ahead and um, I'll just show you what each of these buttons do. So this is the home button. It will just take you back to where we started, uh, to the home page. This is your quick hints button, or sorry, the tutorial button. The next is Quick Hints. So the tutorial, all it does is if you click it, it will take the tutorial off and then you click it again, it will reappear on your screen. Next is the Quick Hints. So this is a very, very helpful uh, option that you guys are probably going to use a lot and I really recommend you to do so as well. So here, if you're having trouble, let's say, understanding what the for loop is, all you do is you click on this bullet point and it will take you to uh, this for loop section and it will give you the definition of a for loop it, and also give you some really cool examples. So I love this option here especially when I'm not understanding a specific uh, category like that are listed in this bullet in these bullet points I just click on it and try and understand it. So here there's also more topics of drawing, you have user input, games and there's others. So please do take a look at those. The next one is backgrounds. So here there are so many amazing backgrounds that you can choose from. So let's say I want one of these, all right? I want the spring background. All you have to do is drag and drop it into your code editor and you can see that the code has now appeared here. So if you run the code, it will print out your spring background as the output. So that's really cool. Now another thing in the backgrounds is there's also a lot of patterns that you can choose from. So you can choose any of these. There's also colors, so just plain colors that you can put as your background. So you have all the colors here that you need. So that's really cool. And the second to last option here is sprites. This is a really fun one to look at. You have all these amazing characters. You can look at the decor options. So there's some trees, buildings, clouds, you have items, they're sets, so these are like little buttons, 
and you have tiles as well. So how about I want to put in one character in my code here. How would I go ahead and do this one? Drag and drop it into your code editor. It puts that code in here. And if you run it, you can see that little guy is added in the middle of our screen. And of course, if you want to change the size of him, you can go ahead and do that right here. So 0 0.5, we can make it 0 0.10. And it will make it smaller. Uh, let's go ahead and do make it much more bigger. How about 7? 0.7. So you can see now it has increased the size. And you can also change where the placement of the character as well. Here are some, the last option is music and sounds. So here you have a lot of music options. Let's say you want to put in any of these sounds. How about the night at the beach? So you drag and drop it. And when you run the code, it should run um, and play the music as well. So that's really cool. You also have some sounds. So let's say you wanted to create a car race game, all right? So you have all of these different phrases that will be said. This is the female, uh, and then you also have the male. So the female here, they have some phrases. So you can say like, ready, set, go, and there are some really cool things that you can combine together and make a new phrase. So. I hope you guys just, uh, you know, play around with all these different options, explore more into these like music and sounds, the, the sprites, backgrounds, and the quick hints. So now let's go back to our home page by clicking that home button. It will ask if you want to save it. And to do that, you just click on this save a copy right there. So make sure to do that before exiting so you can save your code. So now what I want to do is go ahead and click on this code now button that will open a new blank file for you so here i want to just teach you guys some of the basics of javascript the first thing we're going to start off with is javascript syntax javascript syntax is the set of rules on how javascript programs are constructed the first thing i want to teach you guys to show you which is so important is how to create variables so to do that we're going to use that var keyword and we're going to just write in var x and a semicolon. Something about JavaScript is that each and every line of code of, uh, yeah, it has to have a semicolon at the end of the line. So don't forget to do that. The next one um, will set the variable x. So another keyword you can use is let. So it's the same thing as var. You're setting that variable uh, y. So now we've created two different variables, x and y. Now how do we use these variables? So all we have to do is do x is equal to 5. We'll do y is equal to 6, any number you would like. So there we're just setting those values to those two different variables. And you can use these to you know, solve some math problems. Let's say you want, you don't know what 6 plus 5 is. All you have to do is do x plus uh, y. And since you've already assigned these values, it will print out 11 for you. So that's really cool. Now, another thing is that the JavaScript syntax defines two types of values. All right, you have fixed values and variable values. Fixed values are called literals. Variable values are called, you guessed it, variables. So let's start off with literals. The two most important syntax rules for fixed values are numbers and strings. Numbers are written with or without decimals. You have 1.5 or 15, right? Those are both numbers. Strings are text, pieces of text, written within double or single quotes. Let's say you have a print function and you want to print out your name. So you can see that I've print, I have my name in double quotes. So that is considered a string. You can also type it in single quotes and that is also a string. So something I would really recommend you guys it for you is to make it a habit of just using one of these the single quote or the double quote for me i'm a double quotes person <laughs> ever since i started coding i use the double quotes so now it's become an, a regular habit for me 
to just use double quotes and I would recommend that for you just to make it a habit so it's easier to code when you're coding later on in bigger projects. You can use this information for every single programming language. Not only for JavaScript, you can use it for Python, uh, CSS, Java. You can use it for so many other languages as well. So comments is such an important thing to use, especially when you're coding like very big projects. You really want to use comments in your code so you know exactly what each line of those code uh, means. So to do comments in JavaScript, you're going to put two slashes. So here, you see that these two lines of code we have, what is it? Well, what if you forget what those two lines of codes uh, do? Well, don't worry, all you do is put in a comment here, and this, I'm going to write how to create variables. So these two lines of code say how to create variables. And how about the next two? Here, again, two slashes, how to use variables, right? So comments come in handy a lot. So just remember that in JavaScript, you use two slashes. In other languages, it is different, such as in Python, you would actually use a hashtag. All right, and the next thing we are going to talk about is for loops. Loops are so handy if you want to run the same code over and over again each time with a different value. Often this is the case when working with arrays. So let's say instead of writing this, which is the same line of code except just with a different value in the brackets, you can write this. So look how much more simple that this is, uh, such le more less lines of code. So this is a for loop. Now I want to really just dive deep into this for loop and explain to you guys what each of these uh, values mean. So first off, there are different kinds of loops. JavaScript supports different loops, such as for loops, you had the for and in loops, for and of, the while loops, and the do and while. So there are so many, but for today's video, I'm just going to focus on for loops. So this is what I'm going to type here just for you guys to understand it more easily. Expression two, expression three. All right, and then you also are going to have a curly bracket. And here, don't worry, I will explain this soon. And there you go. So this is just the layout of your for loop, all right? You're going to have the for keyword. And in the parentheses, you're actually going to have three different expressions. And each of these will be separated by a semicolon. You're going to have an open curly bracket at the end of that line. And then this is where you're going to write the code, which will actually be executed on your screen. All right, so this first expression. Expression 1 is executed one time before the execution of the code block. Expression two defines the co condition for executing the code block, and expression three is executed every time after the code block has been executed. All right, so now I want to just make that another uh, for loop here with uh, actual values. So let i equal zero. We'll have that as the first expression. i is less than five. And then the final expression will be I++. All right, let's close that. Text plus equals, here we'll have uh, the number is, and then plus I, let's do that. Plus, we'll have another string in here, in the single quotes, br. And just like that, end that with a semicolon, and you're done with your for loop. So from this example right here, you can read that expression 1 sets a variable before the, the loop actually starts. Something I forgot here is a parenthesis. So yeah, I just fixed that. So this is the first expression, right? Expression 1, let i equal 0. That sets a variable before the loop starts. Expression 2 defines the condition for the loop to run which is i must be less than 5. So if i is greater than 5, this for loop will not run. And then 
Um, expression 3 increases a value each time the code block in the loop has been executed. That's what this, is, this code is doing right here. So normally you would actually uh, use expression 1 to initialize the variable used in the loop. And often expression 2 is used to evaluate the condition of the initial variable and expression 3 increments the value of the initial variable. So here, of course, we're doing, uh, we're adding 1 each time. You can also do um, minus 2 minus signs, which would subtract each time. So that's all that I'm going to go into for loops. The last thing I want to cover in this video is arrays. You may have heard me use this word once in this video, so how about I go a little bit more deep into it. So I'm going to just delete this code here. And now, uh, let me just go into JavaScript arrays. An array is a special variable which can hold more than one value. This is an example of an array. So you see that there is, um, I have my keyword which is const and then um, I also have the name of this array which is cars and here I have three different values which is BMW, Tesla and Lambo. So just three different companies of cars, right? And this is all in one array. Now, you may be wondering, why should we even use arrays? Well, let's say you have, if you have a list of items, right? So in this case, a list of car names, for example, storing the cars in single variables could look like this. So this three, these three lines of code took me a while to type. But however, it, what if you want to loop through the cars and find a specific one? And what if you had not three cars, but 300? that would be a lot of different variables to type out. So the solution is an array. An array can hold many values under a single name and you can access the values by referring to an index number. So please do not create these single variables for each of the items you want to hold. Instead, just create one array and you can just keep on adding uh, more values to the array as you go. But that is all for today's video. I hope you guys learned something new about JavaScript. And if you have already used Code Guppy, let me know in the comments below how your experience is going and if you would recommend it to your other friends as well. But that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to NP Station. But that's all for today. Keep reading, keep coding, and stay safe.